loves, how are you? My name is Fumi De Salo Vold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, and for those of you that are regulars, welcome back to the first sister to sister episode of 2021. Woo! What a year! What a year! Ha! Huh. I think January 2nd, January 3rd, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle said they're checking out. That was when I knew that, you know what, it's going to be a situation. They decided to quit the royal family. They relocated to Canada for a hot minute before they went back to California with their beautiful son, Archie. And it was a huge leap. I was like, well, you know what? You got to do what you got to do for love. The most disheartening for me that shook me to the very core was the loss of Kobe Bryant and his daughter. It was such a loss. It was such a shock. It was so unbelievable. I remember my mother said, for me, be very careful with 2020. It's a leap year. It's a leap year. So what would happen in, let us say, four years will happen in one year. So it's going to be very heady. We were still trying to grasp what had happened when COVID-19, they say COVID-19 because the virus was around in 2019. That was when it started and it spilled into 2020. And here I was still waving to Italy. Italy, oh, I'm so sorry. As naive as we are, we had no idea that this was gonna be a global issue. This was gonna be a pandemic. Before you could say whoop to do 22nd of March, I will never forget. <laughs> we were in lockdown. We are on lockdown still. We are on national lockdown in England. We are on tier five. The vaccine is supposed to be become available so that one can start to live their lives and some way or the other, they can level off this virus. And this was our year. And I tried to make the best of it. So I jumped onto the treadmill and lost 40 pounds. It was fun to have you on my journey. Adrian didn't have a birthday party, neither did I, neither did anybody. But instead, when the lockdown was lifted, we took that opportunity to baptize him. And that was great. I also had my collaboration with Juvia's Place towards the very end of the year. And I also found myself in hospital, blood transfusion and all. I suffer from fibroids. The fibroid had gotten out of control. It was huge. And they were like, uh, we need to take this out now. The bombs are up. Okay. I'm going to have a look at your tummy, sweetie. She, Lift your arm back. She's here. actually quite, um, she was quite drowsy, mm. as you can see, but she's, she's okay. We'll just have a look at your tummy. Is that okay? And I remember I just lay there because they ask you before you go under the anesthesia what name you would like to be called when they're trying to get you up out of anesthesia. And I said, Adrian. And when they started calling me, calling Adrian, I was like, thank you, Lord, because this 2020, there were so many people that passed away. There were so many very, very surreal things that happened. And so it humbled us. It humbled me and it made me realize how valuable life is and how much I want to live with my loved ones and grow old and what was important and what is so insignificant. And it was health, health, family, focus on whatever you want to do. Do not waste any time at all. The rest is just noise. That was what 2020 brought about for me. Reset. You have to reset. You have to slow down. Because I truly believe that had we not been on lockdown, I would not have gone to take care of this fibroid once and for all. I wouldn't have done it. I would have been in California, out of in New York, running around, trying to do this, that schedule, trying to get my brand together, the caftans, the mirrors, all of these things that I've been promising you guys. And this fibroid became dangerous. Had I not been on lockdown, had I not been on lockdown, I would not have said, okay, fine, let me take the opportunity. Let me go to the hospital and sort this out. I went in and they did not let me out. That was how serious this was, you know? So for me, 2020 just really showed that 
we have to really just take a breath that as much as you want to take every opportunity and not waste any time, there's no time like the best time when you just pull back for five, 10 minutes a week, reset. Reset and sometimes you need to pull back so that you can see what you're doing. Aha, okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> Ula is working next door. The nanny is downstairs and she's like, Fumi, the freezer is leaking because I'm defrosting the freezer. I forgot about it. So here I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> so as I was saying, you just need to catch your breath and say to yourself, you know what, let me say, take some time out. Let me be with family. Let me be with the children. Let me be with my wife. Let me go and see my friend that I keep on saying, I'll pass by, I'll pass by, I'll pass by. Spend some time when you're going through the supermarket and just say, how are you guys doing? How's everything? I think that we just rush and it's not deliberate. That's something that I want to stress because a lot of people say, oh, you just rush through life. You don't think about anybody else. We always think about our loved ones. We always think about the people that we are surrounded with on a regular basis. It's just that we don't take the time out with them often enough. Pure and simple. We don't act it out. We don't act upon it because we are rushing. We're against the clock. We feel like we're against the clock. But if we continue to have that attitude, then you really do miss out on the important stuff. And that was my lesson for 2020. It was a year where there were so many people that lost their jobs. They lost their homes. They lost their lives. They lost family members. We also lost two family members to coronavirus, one from my mother's side, another from my father's side, auntie and uncle. And it was a huge loss. It was so unexpected. They were healthy. Nothing was wrong with them. And they both died of coronavirus. So it came knocking on our door too. And we feel that loss so very much. Going forward in 2021, I'm a year older <laughs> Adrian's a year older, happy about that. I want to continue churning out content for you guys. I want to start my brand with the mirrors that I have promised you guys with the kaftans. I don't know whether I will be able to kick it off because of the lockdown, because I have to travel to the Philippines for fire break and stuff like that, because I like to touch, I like to feel, I want to be very, very, very hands-on. So I don't know how that's going to play out, but the time has come where I want to do that. And then of of course I'll fall into makeup and stuff like that but the kaftan and the mirrors I've been saying it for the longest you guys keep on asking me it's not that I don't want to I would have done it last year but then again corona so that's what it is until things settle and you're able to travel freely before I can do anything so yeah that's that what can I say I wish you guys the very very best this year I want you to go for gold. I want you to really go out there and be the best that you can because you are limitless. You are limitless in what you can achieve, irrespective of the challenges that we have in front of us. You can write down all of your aspirations and your dreams. Start with that. Some of you tell me, oh, for me, but how do you know? And a lot of the answers you get is like, you know when you know. So let me break it down a little bit for you. It starts with knowing yourself. You're going to know yourself through the mistakes that you make. That's just facts. We're a little bit ambitious when we're younger. We can be anything, we can do anything. And then you realize that you're not so good at this, but you are better at this and it comes easier to you. But the thing is that first and foremost, you have to love yourself. You have to know yourself in all aspects, platonic relationships, intimate relationships, skill sets, education, your capacity. Everything there, you have to love who you are and you have to keep a standard. Whether it displeases somebody else, 
it makes another family member uncomfortable. You cannot be uncomfortable. You cannot be put in a box. You should not put yourself in any tight, uncomfortable, itchy space. You have to be free in your thinking, liberated in what you do. And so you have to surround yourself with people that nourish that because you are going to feed off of that and in turn you're going to grow. For me, that's a lot. That's a bit heady. Please, straight up English. What I'm trying to tell you is that you're going to make mistakes. That's okay. The mistakes are a process of elimination of stuff that you don't need, not good at, and gives you freedom to see what you are good at. Yeah? All right. Now, once you have come together and say, you know what, Fumi, okay, for, for example, for me, Fumi, you know what, you're good with makeup, you're a good actress, you're good with modeling. This is you. This is who you are. I'm not great with this kind of guy who gives the silent treatment that I'm, that's just, we're going to quarrel because I know I can't stand for that. You have your limits. Once you have listed all of that, you have to love who you are. You cannot look at the next person and say, well, she got this, she got that. They're not you and your time will come. I don't know, you don't know, but you've got to be ready because once it strikes, it's going to be hot. So you've got to love everything about you. you that's your foundation. Once you love who you are, you know what your limits are. You know what you excel at. You know what you're limitless at. And everybody has got a gift. Because you know what? We are all God's children. God does not create ugly. No, it's we on earth that talk that kind of nonsense. But God does not create ugly. Everybody has a talent. Everybody has a gift. The thing is that you have to find it in the box that you have put together of the wonderful things that compiles the person that you are. That is how you find your way. And with that, you begin to go gingerly. And along the way, you're going to have times where you fall off that cliff and there is no parachute. That's good training because the bumps and the scars are there to teach you and to remind you of the lessons that you're going to go through. That's just what it is. So at the end of the day, take your time. You don't know what you're doing now. That's okay. Don't worry about it. It will come to you. It will come to you. I will never, ever forget. A lot of you ask me, oh, how did you start modeling? I didn't even know anything about it. I used to go to my auntie and uh, read her cosmopolitan magazines. I just loved them. I would sit down, I would just read, 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 read all the pictures, all of the makeup, the hair, the models, the photographers, the editors. I read all of it. One day, I was at home and my father, he was the commissioner for health of Lagos State at the time. And so they were invited to a lot of events constantly. And so he took me along and I sat down with him at this event and there were a couple of speeches there was a uh, food uh, uh, handy food snacks and stuff like that and then the lights dimmed and the model walked right out it was a fashion show my very first and i said this is what i want to do i lived for it i loved the magic i loved the clothes i loved the model i loved the attention of it all i was like i live for this that was how my first love of modeling came about. It's one thing to watch on TV. It's another thing to see in magazines. But live, with the music beating through your chest, I lived for it. And I just realized when I was in school, I wasn't great with sciences, but I was great with art. I was a storyteller. And that's how I was with my history, with my Bible knowledge. I wasn't crazy about economics, but I could live. English, I did English language, literature, again, the drama. I passed all of those. So I realized this is where I will have to lean towards. A lot of people thought, oh, you'll be a lawyer, but I love the drama and I love drama class and I was in the drama society. I was the vice president of the drama society. And so I leaned towards acting. Do you see what I'm saying? That is how you unveil the person that you are. And over time, you begin to understand what you're good at and what you're not good at. The same thing with relationships. You hit a wall every single time. It's not the guy, it's the pattern and the type of guy you keep getting attracted to 
pretty pretty face bad attitude for you you guys just do not click do not get along the way he behaves to you is disheartening to you you have to find a guy and you have to close your eyes and i've said it a hundred times and it is his attitude you have to build on that does he love you does he care is he the family man does he respect love your family all of that is important because it tells the kind of respect and love he has for you a guy will do it for the right girl you have to be the right girl you can't be the okay girl you can't be the standby girl you can't be the girl that he said okay you know what i want kids let's do this he has to love your dirty drawers <laughs> did i say that i said it it is what it is so yeah that's 2020 for you my darlings let's go let's go for gold and let us stay healthy okay all of my love Mwah. this city has a special morning voice Speaks to me through an open window Masquerading as noise Ten million people Somehow I'm the lucky guy Who gets to make you a coffee cup And if I ever forget What matters most If I am giving up the ghost Remind me, babe And I will do my best to recall And if I stumble and fall If I make a mess of it all Remind me And I will do my best to recall This is